Good day, everyone. Today, we are going to tackle the commodity system analysis and traffic good. In this discussion, the agribusiness system approach was followed. This study is going to be discussed by the authors Teresa Marie de Somlo, Gila Amanda Espitigan, Gian Paolo Perentino, and yours truly, Karen Kamerdaya. To start, this discussion will run through the commodity that was analyzed. Dragon fruit is locally known as Signata, and it was initially introduced to the Philippines because of the Manila Akapul Pavilion trade that happened in the 1990s. Philippines' first production and cultivation of the fruit was in 1992 and started in a farm in Tambong Balagbag in Nangkabite, which was owned by Alex Leiton and was assisted by Nicolas Silas. Years after, Mrs. Edita Dacolfoy sought assistance from various institutions to implement Project Sanyata, which is about utilizing the extended daylight technology. Currently, Dragon Fruit is considered native to southern Mexico, the Pacific coast of Guatemala, Costa Rica, and El Salvador. There are countries that produce dragon fruits aside from the countries mentioned. In Australia, there are numerous dragon fruit farms. However, Australia's dragon fruits are only sold in their domestic market and are not allowed to be accessed by other countries because of biosecurity reasons. In Central America, Nicaragua is considered as the primary producer of dragon fruit. This is because of the successful planting and importation of dragon fruits in that country. Moving on to Southeast Asia, Vietnam has the largest area and production of dragon fruit in Asia and in the world. Moreover, Thailand's dragon fruit production has been increasing tremendously because of high market demand. Dragon fruit is considered as an income generator and is dubbed by farmers as money generator crops. This is because a tree can approximately yield an income of 1,000 pesos per year. Aside from being an income generator, there are numerous health benefits that we can derive from dragon fruit. The fruit is rich in antioxidants, which can help prevent cancer and premature aging. It is also rich in vitamin C, can help strengthen the immune system, and it can also help lower the blood sugar. Moving on to dragon fruit in the sector, there are two main varieties grown in the Philippines. Hyacerus odinatus is a variety that has white flesh. This is the most common one and is followed by Hyacerus costaricensis. The latter has a darker red flesh dragon fruit. The fruit is commonly grown in tropical and subtropical climates since it is a fresh and chilling sensitive fruit. It also requires a temperature of 18 to 25 degrees Celsius with good relative humidity for its optimal growth. Aside from that, the fruit grows in a wide range of soils, from sandy loam to clay loam. However, it grows best in sandy soils that have good organic matter and internal drainage. According to a study conducted by Eusebio, the fruit requires great amount of application of organic fertilizers at the plant base and also inorganic fertilizers. Since dragon fruit is newly introduced crop species in the Philippines, there are few publications of fertilization for the tree. To put into perspective, the cost of dragon fruit cultivation per acre in India, it would be 3 to 4 lakhs, which equivalent to 200,000 pesos. Essential inputs needed for dragon fruit production in the Philippines are mostly imported. These are sourced out from Vietnam, Taiwan, and Thailand. But in terms of planting equipment or materials, these are available in the Philippines and are being used by different dragon fruit plantations in the country. For dragon fruits farm sector, its production in the Philippines has been increasing since 2012. As of 2017, the country's total area of dragon fruits planted is 449.50 hectares and a total production of 1,462.51 megatons. And the fruit cost around 120 to 150 pesos per kilo in the Philippine local market. Dragon fruit can be cultivated through seed or stem cutting, but since it takes several years for the tree to produce a fruit, Stem cuttings are the most common option used for cultivating dragon fruit. It is planted in the fields with direct exposure to the sunlight and thrives in a tropical climate country 
with the location with uniform distribution of rainfall throughout the year. Management practices are necessary for a productive yield of dragon fruit. These management practices include establishment of supporting structure for each dragon fruit post, such as trellises since it is a vine crop, application of fertilizer that has low nitrogen cactus fertilizer or granular 8 to 4 to 12 ratio of NPK fertilizer, which must be applied as early as 3 months of age and also in every two months, and lastly, annual pruning. It helps in achieving the proper number of stems per post for a better and easier penetration of sunlight and air for dragon fruit. This will also serve as a preventive measure for farmers since decaying and disease on stems are inevitable. Manual handpicking is advised to prevent damage to the fruit. It is also encouraged that the harvesting crew must wear leather gloves and long sleeve shirts when harvesting thorny varieties. Shown in your screens are the pictures of cultural management practices for dragon fruit. Since stem cuttings are the most favorable propagation method for dragon fruit, mass propagation of stem cuttings is one of the development projects made by the Bureau of Agricultural Research in the Philippines. Dragon fruits are mainly consumed fresh. Aside from that, there are products that can be derived from dragon fruit. They can be in the form of dessert, juice, wine, ice cream ingredient, yogurt, jelly, preserves, marmalade, candy, pastries, and even its flower bud can be cooked as a vegetable. Shown here in the table are developed products by Mrs. Edita Dakoykoy, the owner of Ref Mad Farm. Aside from being edible, Dragon fruits can also be made into a cosmetic product such as creams, lotions, and moisturizers. The top 5 major processors of dragon fruit in the Philippines are Ilocos Region which produces 507.6 megatons, Cagayan Valley Region with 364.80 megatons, Calabar Zone with 205.46 megatons, Central Luzon has 199.62 megatons, and Central Visayas with 105.7 megatons. Even though dragon fruit production in the Philippines is in its early stages, the volume and value of the commodity have continued to increase yearly. Shown in the table is the significant increase from 2012 to 2017. Let's now take a look at the marketing sector. For the marketing channel, the harvested fruits are delivered to retailers, processors, and wholesalers. The wholesalers get big volumes of dragon fruit directly from the farm that will be delivered to pruning posts and supermarkets. Meanwhile, in Thailand, the role of local traders and food collectors in the distribution pathway are important because they are in charge of setting the price from farm to consumer. Moving forward, dragon fruits are mostly marketed through local markets or food stands. It can also be marketed in online selling, peddling, and special distribution or delivery lines. Certain dragon fruit products that are developed by both public and private institutions ranges from patented goods to cooking recipes made from dragon fruit. And the usual target place of delivering this crop by middlemen is in Manila, Baguio, Cebu, and Davao. The range of farm gate price for direct buying of dragon fruit is 50 to 80 pesos per kilo, which will then be sold by the retailers at a price of 120 to 180 pesos per kilo. The activities for promotion and commercialization of dragon fruit by provision of planting materials is conducted by Kailoko and Sanyata Producers Cooperative. Furthermore, the high price trend of this crop that ranges from 120 to 180 pesos makes it as a new money-making crop with a promising capability of yielding high profit. As presented in this figure, it shows the situation of demand and supply for dragon fruit. In terms of market size, South Asia, Africa, and South America are the regions with high demand. China is the leading country to be the largest consumer of dragon fruit in Asia and in the world. In terms of supply, the major dragon fruit suppliers of the world are Vietnam, Thailand, and Taiwan. Vietnam continues to be the leading producer and exporter of dragon fruit in the whole world. In fact, the country has the highest share in Asia, Europe, and the United States. 
Let us now move forward to the support subsector. The continuing growth in dragon fruit production will not be possible without the help of universities that conduct researches, government agencies that aid in technical support, and other organizations that aid in promotion and commercialization of the commodity. These notable universities are Cavite State University, Mariano Marcos State University, and UPLB's Post-Harvest Horticulture Training and Research Center. Also, the help of the Department of Science and Technology, Department of Agriculture, Casa Coop, and the Philippine Dragon Fruit Growers and Processors National Council are significant in the industry. Through the years, development programs and projects regarding dragon fruit production were done. In 2003, Agribusiness Development Project was administered with the aim of enhancing and sharing the production technology of dragon fruit, propagating seedlings for distribution to other interested growers, and establishing the value of the crop. While in 2011, Project Sanyata was conducted with the goal of producing dragon fruit at any time of the year, through the initiated extended daylight technology. As the industry steadily grows, projects like these are continuously developed. In terms of productivity enhancement, concerns in planting materials, nutrition, post-harvest, and pest management were raised together with strategies that might help the further development of the industry. For the post-harvest management, research on shelf life extension of dragon fruits using different approaches can help minimize the loss during this stage. And lastly, regular monitoring of crops and validation of available technologies will help in the development of an integrated pest management approach. Investment priorities such as promotion campaigns were aimed to be solved by establishment of industry websites for investment promotion and publication of opportunities and benefits in dragon fruit investment. While land banking or profiling was to be tackled by conducting regular land banking activities to identify, process, or profile the potential production areas. Concerns in other agro-services are focused on the fact that areas reached by financing institutions and cooperatives are still small and have slow dissemination of information regarding the improved techniques, knowledge, and technologies of the industry. Let us now discuss the integrated analysis. First, the input sector. The strengths of this subsystem include availability of planting materials and Philippines favorable climate. The weaknesses include the lack of publications about dragon fruit fertilization and sources of inputs are mainly dependent on imports from other Southeast Asian countries. There's a huge opportunity in the input sector because of high yielding varieties of dragon fruit that can be produced by technical development and advancement of QAP and GAP. Although threats like inferiority of available varieties in the country and high cost of initial investments leads to major bottleneck in venturing in this industry. In the farm sector, strengths include favorable climate and soil condition. Yield of dragon fruit continues to increase, high potential of systems and cultural management, adaption of production technologies from neighboring countries. Although the weakness in the subsystem is the high initial investment needed to start a dragon fruit farm, but opportunities can still be seen in this sector, like the edge it obtained in competitiveness in mass propagation in the entire Ilocos region, Cavite, Davao, and Bukidnon. Threats are still present, like the lack of proper management practices of the farmers in the, in the industry, leading to low yield of the crop. The strength in the processing sector is the capability to produce a variety of products derived from dragon fruit, such as food, drink, and hygiene products. Although weaknesses of this sector are still visible, like the fact that high investment costs in dragon fruit processing systems is needed together with the technological disadvantages and lack of technical skills and knowledge of farmers. But opportunities present itself such as a lot of institutions supporting the innovation of dragon fruit products can be seen. Although threats in this sector include the inconsistent climate and unforeseen calamities in the Philippines. For the marketing sector, the fact that dragon fruit is associated with many health beneficial claims that creates a demand for the commodity, although it is not a widely known commodity yet. The fact that Asian countries are the largest consumers of dragon fruit, this presents an opportunity for the Philippines to export dragon fruit to nearby countries. The lack of aggressive marketing strategies and development of export infrastructure 
is considered as a threat in this subsystem. Last is the support sector. Having numerous support services that assist the commodity system by research, development, promotion, and commercialization is considered as its strength. But these support systems are still not enough to make dragon fruit a mainstream crop. Hence, the collaboration of this sector with LGUs and other government institutions is seen as a vital opportunity. Next is the conclusions and recommendations. It is concluded that despite the continuous growth of the dragon fruit industry in the Philippines, it is still at its early stages, resulting in a relatively low total production. Also, there is still a long way to go when it comes to the exportation. Furthermore, the blocking factor in the progress of this industry might be traced back to the inadequate support from Philippine government, high investment costs, and lack of planning and technical knowledge of the farmers. That's why this analysis recommends the adaptation of practices made by the leading producer of dragon fruit, which is Vietnam. These are the off-season planting techniques using LED lights and post-harvest preservation practices. Several strategies can also be implemented to achieve expansion of the commodity system, such as strategic research and development, technology transfer, policy formulation, and capability building. Next is the suggested framework to make the strategies presented a while ago more feasible. This supply chain is adopted from the dragon fruit supply chain in Vietnam. This can be done through initiating partnerships with the public and private institutions to further improve the dragon fruit production and operations in the Philippines. An ongoing project in Vietnam that uses an online platform to enhance Vietnam's brand in relation to dragon fruit and promote the industry can also be adapted. Doing this will empower micro, small, and medium enterprises, as well as provide consumers with valuable and sufficient information of the farm to plate pathway. This will allow supply chain participants to receive a greater insight into their business performance as well. The dragon fruit industry in the Philippines can follow the footsteps of Vietnam by implementing this project for a more structured system in the industry and a sustainable future of the commodity in the country. That being said, it is an honor for our group to share with you the Commodity System Analysis Report on Dragon Fruit. We look forward to the time when this crop will be successfully produced in our country. With that, thank you for listening and have a good day.